Hi, welcome to Chiwanki. My name's Emily, and I'm here with my friend Kyle. Kyle, what are you doing? I'm just enjoying the day. The beautiful blue sky is out in front of us. Just thinking about what it'd be like to be up there. Come on down. Ooh, all right. Wow, it's beautiful. It really is, isn't it? What are we looking at? Well, the bright, beautiful sky, the great aerial ocean above our head is teeming with energy pouring in from the cosmos. Our sun is giving us all the energy we have in our planet through that radiant light. And when that light comes down, it's being fixed by something green. Oh, like grass and the leaves. The grass, the trees, the leaves, all these animals uh, or plants, these creatures that have chlorophyll, right? They are using photosynthesis to convert that energy into simple sugars that they use to feed themselves. And then we use to, you know, as consumers, as animals, uh, consumers are gonna be eating the plants, eating other smaller animals, moving up that food chain and allowing themselves to live. Wow. And so that energy is being constantly changed. It's this rainbow of woven different patterns of energy, right? You have kinetic energy, the motion energy, you have potential energy waiting to be released. You have chemical and electrical energy and all of that is being used up over time. Every time it passes through uh, from one animal to the next, we're losing a lot of that. About 90% mm. of it gets lost as latent heat, I believe. Wow. Uh, so you're always having the energy pouring in and the energy pouring out. Ooh, a bird. Yeah, see how it's flying across the sky there? Flapping those wings, using up a lot of that energy, the kinetic energy, to keep itself aloft as it's fighting gravity to stay up there. It might look effortless, but it's a tremendous amount of work and it takes up a lot of the energy they have just to stay aloft. That's why a lot of birds and a lot of animals that fly are so lightweight. They want to be as light as possible so they're not having to fight and hold themselves up with all that extra weight. Huh. Kyle, if it's so energetically expensive to fly, why would animals do it? Well, there's a number of reasons. Animals are, they have adaptations, right? It's these special superpowers that give them an advantage over others. And all those adaptations, they cost energy. Mm. So that sun is beaming down on us right now, and it's providing our planet with free energy that's fixed by the plants, turned into food, sugars, no, no, no. Mm. And everything is eating different things and gaining that energy. So these animals are using that energy in different ways. Sometimes animals become, for example, poisonous or toxic. They generate poisons in their body, which costs a lot, but it keeps them safe. Mm. Flight is something just like that. They get this tremendous advantage by flying high above. It might be very expensive, but it's gonna give them some amazing benefits that other animals don't have. What are the benefits of flight? Why would an animal want to fly? Well, think about what that might give them. If they are mm. flying high above, what can they see from up there? Maybe they could see food that they might want to eat. Exactly. Their, their range, their territory is going to be much larger. They can travel much farther distances so they can find that food. They can find shelters high up away from the ground where uh, they might be a little safer. And they can find oh new open spaces. So mm. food, water, shelter, space, all those resources they're looking for. What yeah. else? Maybe it might help them find a mate. <laughs> Yeah, when you have a much larger territory, you can travel much further distances. So migration is possible, mm. getting away from these cold, wintry <laughs> lands and going south for the summer, and maybe finding other animals that are moving along with you, connecting. Wow. I also can't help but think that it would be really fun to fly. <laughs> it would be amazing, right? Think of all the different ways these animals are flying. There's a lot of different forms of flight that isn't true flight, like flapping. So we should think about those different designs. And today, for our activity, we're going to be creating some means of flight ourselves. Ooh. Now we can't fly, sadly, we're a little too heavy, <laughs> but we can make devices, maybe particular airplanes or crafts that can fly the skies like these animals. Awesome, so we can learn a little bit from these animals and take some of their tricks to make some really cool flying objects. Exactly, we call that biomimicry. Awesome, so let's go biomimic some flying objects. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, Kyle, why are we here? Well, we're here to think about different ways these animals are flying through the air. So there's only one tr form of true flight, right? That's flapping and propelling yourself through the sky. But a lot of other animals are flying. Animals that you might not even thinking of are right in the skies. Wow, what are some different ways that animals get into the sky? Well, if they can't flap their way up in the air, they're gonna have to climb, right? So these trees behind us are gonna be a great source for these animals to get up a little higher and different forms of flight are gonna be things like ballooning, kiting, gliding, and then your true flight. Awesome. What are some animals that do that ballooning? Yeah, I'm thinking of a creature with many little legs, eight little legs, 
spiders. Yeah, they build a web, they catch insects that are flying to the sky, and then when they're young, they're going to fly to new areas themselves. Wow, how do they do that? Put out a long strand of silk, and just like a kite or a balloon, it's going to catch the wind and carry them off. They don't have control over that. They can't control where they go. They're at the mercy of the wind currents and even the electrical currents as they pass through the sky. Wow. It's pretty neat. Awesome. So we have our ballooners, our spiders. Mm -hmm. You mentioned gliding. Gliding is another form of falling with style. You have to get up really high and then leap off and use whatever kind of form your body is that can be flattened down to catch the air currents and glide. So we kind of mimic that with gliders in the air and we'll be mimicking that today with our projects. A lot of our airplanes or our designs we make are going to be gliders catching that wind. Wonderful. But I'm thinking of like, have you heard of a flying squirrel? Yes! They're so cute! Little nocturnal creatures that we can find here in Maine. They're going to climb up the tree, leap off, and they're going to ride down and they can even turn 90 degrees in mid-flight. Wow. But they can't just flap off the ground. They have to stay uh, hidden if they're on the ground and a predator's nearby. Mm. Okay, so the last but not least is true flight. Yeah, everyone knows true flights, but there are different kinds of flights. We have the birds that everyone's thinking of with those feathers, but we also have bats, the mm -hmm. only true flighted mammal with hands and wings that are just like ours with the membrane between, and then insects with those large, beautiful wings, butterflies, as well as mosquitoes and, and beetles. Lots of these creatures have these lovely wings that are helping them to propel themselves through the air. Awesome. So today, if we're going to try to make objects that can fly, should we be building uh, ballooners? Should we be building true flyers? What should we be building? You can try all of these with your design. I encourage you to get creative, but the easiest one today is going to be gliding awesome. because just like a simple tool that you can toss out to be the jumping off of a high spot and ride in that sky. You don't need any kind of motor or propulsion. You just need a little bit of wind. Wonderful. So let's work on our gliders. Yeah, we have a few examples that we can check out right down here. So Emily, these are just a few of the different designs that our friends at home can model after. We have some templates on our site that are going to allow you to make the designs that we have here, but you can also get creative and make your own. If you have a favorite paper airplane design that you think works really well, I encourage you to try that and then try some others, but think about what animals you're mimicking, what form of biomimicry uh, you are taking from these different animals that are out there. Cool. So, Tell us a little bit more about these designs. Yeah, all of these are designed as gliders, right? They're flying through the air, but they're designed after the wings of different birds. So different birds that are flying are propelling themselves. Our, our planes aren't propelling themselves, but their wings are going to be allowing them to fly in different ways. This is your classic paper airplane shape, those long kind of narrow dart-like form, and it's modeled after those long kind of thin wings that are allowing these birds to actively glide. You have gulls and albatross that are riding the skies and the wind currents and flying long distances. So mm. this is a very great uh, flight for long distance flying. Passive flyers, like our friends the eagles or the vultures, are riding the sky with big broad wings with those little kind of primary feathers you can see sticking out. That's going to catch the air and ride the thermals and make them have a very soft and graceful flight. They're not having to use as much energy. That just kind of softly moves through the air there really easily. This here has very short kind of pointed wings. Again, a dart form, similar to our long active soaring wings, but a little stubbier. This is modeling after the very pointed wings of a falcon. So falcons are very fast flying birds, and this has a lot of weight in the front. It's going to allow it to fly very fast and quickly through the air. Mm. And then last but not least, uh, the, the main four that I have here are going to be your elliptical wing shapes. Uh, your oval shaped wings, kind of like crows and songbirds like cardinals and chickadees. They're going to be very good at short bursts of speed, maybe a little acrobatic in the air, but not going to be traveling very far. Mm. And then we can try other things as well. I found this really cool design that is going to help uh, kind of flap almost like a bat. Uh, as it moves through the air, you might see a little bit of a fluttering and flapping. So this is neat, cool. kind of models that flapping behavior. I played around with some origami to try to make some actual bird shapes. They don't fly as well, at least this one doesn't, but you can get creative and play around with it and make different forms. And then we have all sorts of really clever and unique designs uh, that play with the form of like drag in the air and wind resistance in different ways. And if you want to move away from paper airplanes, there's lots of really cool things you can do with kites. Our little seagull here, looks like he's got a bent beak, but this is going to catch the wind using that string to create drag and be able to soar through the air <laughs> in a kind of majestic way when you're running and moving. Wow, so cool. Thank you so much, Kyle. I'm really excited to see what you all come up with at home. Please use these designs based off of our birds in the sky um, to come up with your own flying machines. We'd love to see what you develop and hear about how far or how fast they go. You could even make them artistic. Um, we'd love to see what you do.
Thank you so much, Kyle. This has been really fun. Pleasure, yeah. I think I'm ready to, to fly. Yeah, the sky is blue. The clouds are gone. It's a beautiful, clear sky. Let's go fly. Let's go. <laughs>